Welcome Adventures. Is moving just 25 feet in an action or making only one strike in an action simply not good enough for you? Did a monster dare grapple you once and you simply cannot allow that to happen again? Well, then you need to be a whirlwind of terror on the battlefield. You need to be a monk. Welcome to Rebel Then King. Today, we're talking about one of the most underrated classes in Pathfinder 2nd Edition, the Monk. A Monk is a strength or dexterity-based character with training in simple weapons. They actually have no armor training, but they are experts in unarmored defense with 10 hit points per level and, oh yeah, they are experts in all of the saving throws. And they are trained into a number of skills equal to four plus their intelligence modifier, which is pretty good. There are no subclasses for the monk. They just pick up feats and stances and other cool monk-like things along the way. Okay, and I know in my fighter video, I singled the fighter out and said that they're the only class that doesn't have a dedicated subclass uh, and how I don't like them for that. Um, I guess I lied, sorry, right. The monk also doesn't have a dedicated subclass, but I don't dislike the monk for that. So I guess I'm inconsistent too, sorry. Well, if we're gonna talk about monks, we've gotta start with Flurry of Blows. It is their signature move. It's pretty simple too. For one action, you make two unarmed strikes. They can be at different targets. And one part of the rules that I read and never really understood until I recently saw this in actual play and was like, ah, oh, that's why it exists. If both strikes hit the same creature, you combine their damage for the purposes of calculating resistance or weakness. Now, I saw this in a role for combat uh, podcast where they were fighting some constructs that had hardness and the monk hit once, twice, and each one of the strikes on their own I think either wouldn't have gotten through the hardness or barely would have, but once they were combined and the hardness was only reduced once, then the strikes were pretty powerful. And I was like, oh, okay, that's why that exists. So for the most part, it doesn't come up, but it is really handy when it does. And what Flurry of Blows basically means is that a monk has fantastic action economy. They can pretty reliably do two things and strike twice every single turn. In fact, I think they might be the only class where I say, go ahead and strike three times, strike four times. Who cares about multiple attack penalty? First of all, you'll be striking at only a negative eight and not negative 10 because your unarmed attacks are agile. And you know, when you're doing a flurry and that only takes one action, go ahead and use your third action on a third strike. You know, the more you roll the dice, the more you're going to get lucky. So go for it as a monk. And on the note of good action economy, monks have incredible movement. And movement translates into actions because you're faster, so you don't need to use as many actions to get where you're going. Starting with level three, all monks will get incredible movement. That just increases your movement speed by five. That's great. You can also pick up feats to help out movement. In tiger stance, you can step 10 feet rather than just five feet. You can also pick up Key Rush. That's a focus spell where you get to use one action to move twice. It's so nice. Now, one potential downside of the monk is they don't hit that hard. You are using your fists after all. So typically you're going to be doing only D6 plus four damage. Now, thankfully as a monk, you do upgrade your normally D4 fists into a d6, so that's nice. But a monk also can gain access to more powerful unarmed attacks through stances. For example, you can pick up the mountain stance and gain a d8 falling stone attack, or the dragon stance with a d10 dragon tail. 
that is a good way as a monk to up your damage output. And not only do stances offer damage output, they actually can give you some other bonuses as well. For example, Gorilla Stance will give you a plus two to climb checks, which, you know, that makes sense, right? Crane Stance will make leaping and jumping easier, and Stumbling Stance is sort of the drunken master one, and it gives you a bonus to uh, use deception checks to faint. So stances give you some additional damage and give you some slight additional bonuses to other actions, and they're just nice and easy and reliable. It's one action to drop into a stance, there's no check or roll needed to do that, and additionally, you can actually pick up more stances by grabbing them each time you gain a class feat. So monks have pretty good attacks, great action economy, very good movement, but the most powerful part about them might actually be their defenses. And right, they're not wearing armor, but they're the most defensible in the game. And that is because they are experts in unarmored defense and experts in their saving throws. So this basically means that a monk is so nimble and so well honed mind, body, and spirit that nothing can touch them. In fact, I'm pretty sure that a dex-based monk who goes all in, plus four on dex, is the only viable class or character build at level one that can achieve a 19 armor class. Let me know if I'm wrong about that, but I think due to the limitations of the prices of some of the better armors, uh, the heavy tank classes can't quite do it, and it is just the monk. So literally the most offensive in the game. And the saves of the monk are super important because, well, a lot of monsters in Pathfinder 2nd Edition will have some abilities that specifically target your saves. You see, a lot of creatures will have an initial attack, and if that attack lands, they'll have a secondary ability, like a giant snake might bite you and then poison you, or bite you then constrict you. That first bite, that attack, well, that goes against your armor class, but that second ability will go against your saves. So sure, you don't want to be bit, you don't want to take that initial damage, but if you do, it's a lot better to just take that damage and be done than it is to take damage and then take additional damage or be immobilized. That's where the saves, well, they, they, they save you, they're saves. And when you combine that movement, the armor class and the saves, monks can be literally untouchable on the battlefield. I remember in a Knights of Last Call actual play, their monk character walked up to an enemy, tripped it and then walked away. All that that enemy could do on their turn was stand up, stride, and stride again. Wasted the entire turn of that enemy. That is just perfect gameplay. And it's for those reasons that I did call out the monk as, I think, the perfect flanking fighter in my party composition video. So if you haven't checked that out, do so now. Uh, the TLDR is, I think they're really good at accompanying your frontline DPS fighter, but a lot of other information in that video, so go check it out. In addition to these cool abilities we've already talked about, monks also have access to some magic. I'm not really sure if it's magic per se, but they are focus points and focus spells. I could see them being kind of flavored as, it's just physical abilities that the monk is so good at, it's almost like they're magic. For example, I think we've already talked about this, but the key rush, that is one action, two movements, they're really fast. There's key strike, you cast that and you do extra damage, and then you can level up to like key blast at level three. I think these have great mechanics. You know, it gives you that, not necessarily Hail Mary, but that once per combat extra boost that you need. And it really fits the flavor of the monk well. If I was going to nitpick the monk, I'd say they're a very slightly multiple attribute dependency class. That's because to get the most out of that unarmored defense, you probably do want to go all in on decks and only have a plus three at the most strength. So you'll lose out on a little bit of damage with your strikes. It's really not so bad. 
You can use Mountain Stance to go in on Strength, but that does require using an action to drop into Mountain Stance, so I don't know. It's not that much of a limitation, but again, if I had to nitpick, that would be it. And again, I'm sorry. I know I railed and bashed on the fighter for not having dedicated subclasses, even though the monk is equally guilty. And I don't know, I'm going to stand by it. I still like the monk and I don't think they're overpowered. And I still kind of think the fighter's weird and a bit overpowered. Sorry. Well, there we have it. Fantastic defenses, great movement, and pretty decent offensive capabilities. I think it's for these reasons that I often see the Pathfinder 2nd Edition Monk called out as the best implementation of the monk in any fantasy game. I'm a big fan. It's just so reliable, so survivable, and it has lots of great upgrades along the way. I think for these reasons, I'm going to have to give the monk 8 out of 10 broken boards. You gotta, you gotta follow all the way through for those last two monks, sorry. But... What do you all think? Does anybody out there have some complaints about the monk that I missed? Or do you think maybe I'm still selling them short somehow? Let me know in the comments. Until then, keep tempting the monsters with your tasty, unarmored skin. And as soon as they get close, jump out of the way. Bam, bam. Hit them twice. Jump to the other side. Run all the way around. Bam, bam. Hit them again. Because you can do that. You're a monk.